Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And welcome as we come together to celebrate today this feast of the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And we are called on this day to reflect on our own family life. At the times perhaps we notice we have not done what is expected of us in our families, let's ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house delight one day in eternal rewards. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me if I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a slave born in my house will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir, your own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He, the Lord, is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. He, the Lord, is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name. 
make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. He, the Lord, is our God. He remembers his covenant forever. Glory is in, in his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Turn to the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. He, he the Lord, is our God. God. He, he remembers his covenant forever. Remember the wonders he has done, his marvels and his words of judgment. O children of Abraham, his servant, O descendants of the Jacob he chose. He, he the Lord, is our God. God. He, he remembers, remembers his, his covenant, covenant forever. forever. He remembers his covenant forever the promise he ordained for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. He, he the Lord is our God. God. He, he remembers, remembers his covenant, covenant forever. forever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he was to receive an inheritance, and he went out, not knowing where he was to go. By faith Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. By faith Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac shall your descendants be named. He considered that God was able to raise men even from the dead. Hence he did receive him back, and this was a symbol. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 In many and various ways, God spoke of all to our fathers by the prophets, but in the last days, He has spoken to us. By his son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord, and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And inspired by the Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, 
and for a sign that is spoken against, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, that thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years from her virginity, and as a widow till she was eighty-four. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were looking for the redemption of Israel. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think we are tempted to think that the Holy Family was perfect. And I want to say today how mistaken we are. Think again if you think that the Holy Family was perfect. You see, friends, as we all well know and sometimes don't want to admit, family life is messy. The scriptures reveal that Jesus and Mary and Joseph had to negotiate themselves the challenges and the mess of family life. They certainly did not have it easy. The rosy picture of this holy family that we have painted for centuries is perhaps very misleading. It's misleading because we might measure our own family life against a family that basically does not exist. And then we can become discouraged by the messiness of our own family life because we do this. I want you just to take a look at the story that is unfolding in these days of the Christmas season. I want you to take a look at what the scriptures tell us about the Holy Family. There is much more struggle in that story than often we care to admit. Think of it. Five quick things. We have a pregnancy out of wedlock and talk of divorce in very unconventional circumstances. Now, when we hear the word divorce in the church, we all get excited. And yet, here, when God becomes one of us, there is even talk of divorce. In the scriptures, we are told that Gabriel, the angel, visits both Mary and Joseph. And what does the angel say? Do not be afraid. The angel speaks those words to both of them. They were afraid, I want to suggest, because they knew that their life was messy and that things were not easy for them. Second thing is, think about the circumstances into which Jesus was born. Most inappropriate, in a stable. It seems like Joseph and Mary were poor and couldn't afford to book ahead in some fancy inn or hotel. By the time they got to Bethlehem, there was no space for them. Maybe they left late because they were delayed by an argument that the two of them had. We don't know. Maybe the traffic was really bad en route. Maybe they never booked ahead. And can you imagine the tension between them when they arrived and they could not find a place? And Joseph says to Mary, sorry, I forgot to book a place. They were tired. A stable is not a conducive place to give birth, let alone 
spend the night. It doesn't seem like that was very easy and certainly not perfect. And in that night, they were not surrounded by close friends and family. There was no support from relatives. There was no midwife to help Mary. And in fact, the only people that show up are unsavory characters like shepherds. Shepherds did not have the greatest reputation at that time. To keep the cold at bay, for example, we know that the shepherds used to use some liquid, which was spiritual but not spiritual, if you know what I mean. They were surely not the kind of people that a young mother wanted after she had just given birth. Most mothers prefer to have their own mothers or some relatives close by. And so we see yet again difficult and messy circumstances. And soon after that, the scriptures tell us that Jesus and Joseph and Mary have to flee their own country for fear that their son would be killed. They become asylum seekers or refugees. They go to live in a foreign land. And perhaps they have to put up with things like xenophobia and all that entails. They have a baby with them. They have to negotiate a new culture, a new way of life. And all this puts strain on a relationship. And then the fifth thing we are told about family life of the Holy Family in the Scriptures is that Jesus goes missing when they go up to Jerusalem. Can you imagine? Has he been kidnapped? Has he been trafficked? Did Mary moan at Joseph for not looking out and being more careful with their son, or vice versa? Imagine the panic of those parents. And then to top it all, when they find him, Jesus responds to his parents in a rather insolent way when he says, where else would you have expected me to be? The answer perhaps that many families struggle with when they have teenage children who push back and are difficult. You see, no family is or ever will be perfect. Being a holy family is about traveling the path with and to God together. We are very mistaken when we equate holiness with perfection. These are not the same thing. When we choose to walk together to God, despite the struggle, that's what holiness really is. And so this feast is about learning that in the messiness of family life, God is present and inviting us to be holy. We sanctify family life when we choose to do the right thing. When we strive to be good and ethical and upright people who hold fast to the values that we have as a family despite the challenges and the struggles that face us. Despite the difficulties and even the conflicts amongst us. Despite the family busts up, bust ups, the divorces in our families and the pain that that causes. Despite all that, when we choose to hold on to our values and continue the journey together, that's when we imitate the Holy Family. All families, or family-like units, are holy families, despite all that's wrong, when they trust and know that God is in their midst, loving them, calling them, and inviting them never to give up. And when they do exactly the same for one another, love, call, invite, and never give up. 
So perhaps today, instead of thinking our families should be perfect, let's interrogate what holiness really means. And we will discover in the messiness of our own families, there too we will find the holiness of God. And so, friends, let's make a profession of faith together, and let's pray today the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God's word has been spoken to us, and we respond to that word by bringing before the Lord our needs, especially the needs of our families and the needs of all God's people. For the human family, that it may come to see itself as one family and work to break down the walls of suspicion and division that exist among all peoples. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family of the Church, that in a world of conflict and division, it may be a sign of unity, an instrument of God's peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all leaders and legislators, that they may work to protect families as the most important place of care and formation in society. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all our families, that the Spirit of God would be with us and bless us as we strive to negotiate together the ups and downs of family life and seek holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all parents, that parents, single parents, guardians, and all those who take care of others, especially children, in family-like units, would know the presence of God and His blessing upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For unconventional families, for families who do not necessarily conform to the norm, yet strive to live together in peace and harmony, that they too would know God's love and care for them, and all their efforts to walk the road to holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the particular needs of our own families, we pray silently now. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we thank you for the gift and the challenge of our families and family life. We pray today that you hear these prayers that we have made, and that you help us to strive together to be holy with and for one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
this video is for to allow you to think of someone else and you give trust to humble himself to share in our human nature. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Wash away our iniquities. Cleanse us from all our sin. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of all our lives, especially in our families, may be acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and St. Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and in your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor when our frailty is assumed by your word. Not only does human mortality receive unending honor, but by his wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, he became the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. And as he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the cup filled with the fruit of the vine. And once more, giving you thanks, he handed the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. 
Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one cup, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, Duncan his assistant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. We pray together now as God's family in the very words that the Lord Jesus himself taught us. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's spend a moment now praying for peace, most especially on this day, for peace in our families. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, the one who was born into a family and lived family life like ourselves. How happy are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. 
Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And I wish you all a very good family day today. No matter what or where you spend that day, that whoever you're with, there would be charity and love shared amongst you. Amen.